Chef Pennington here. Today we are doing artisan chicken tortilla soup. Artisan meaning that everything is fresh and homemade and beautiful. So I've added a table of contents down in the description below. There'll be time links within the video that can jump you to the certain parts in the video. So you guys can follow along easily, which is cool. Let's get started. So we're going to cook the chicken. And while cooking the chicken, we're going to make a chicken broth. If you guys want to do chicken stock and you had some extra chicken bones in your freezer, this would be a good time to pull them out. So we're looking at a four pound chicken here, between four and six pounds. That's your average size. Most of them are closer to probably six pounds. We're using the non -anti no antibiotics, no hormones. Do rinse your chicken off, real important. And let's get started on the broth. So we're gonna get a chicken into the Instapot. I'm a big fan of the Instapot. If you guys aren't or haven't done the Instapot thing yet, I highly encourage you guys to get on the bandwagon because it does so many things, it's amazing. Just wait to see how good this chicken is cooked. You guys are going to be blown away. Seriously. You don't need to peel the carrots, which, you know, why would you peel the carrots? I've noticed even on Food Network, a lot of recipes these days, they haven't been peeling the carrots, which I can't say I'm a fan of that, but I've been noticing it. Get a little bit of celery in there. Let's put the maraqua in there. This is a very important ingredient. We're going to put some tomato paste. And I'm also using Hunt's, which I like because it has no high fructose corn syrup. Real important. The can opener, my dad got that for me. It's pretty cool. It's pretty convenient. I'll have a link below if you guys are interested in shopping around. It's pretty inexpensive. You notice I turn a little bit there. It's not a tablespoon. It's more than a tablespoon. This is going to start helping us color our stock. It's going to look beautiful. You could use, use sea salt. I happen to have Himalayan sea salt at home, so I went ahead and used it, which is just really healthy for you. This is a really healthy dish, so it kind of makes sense. I believe Himalayan sea salt has like over 50 elements on the periodic table. It's amazing stuff. Garlic. This is a touchy one for some people. I personally like garlic, so I'm using garlic. If you guys aren't a fan, just omit it. It's around eight cups of water. Pretty much you just want to cover all of your vegetables so that everything has a chance to cook in the liquid. And then you're good to go. All right, let's set our settings. We're going to be making sure that you're on ceiling so that everything doesn't blow up and go all over the place. We're going to use the soup broth, which is a pressurized cooking method. And we're going to set it for 40 minutes exactly. And we're going to make sure that we're on normal pressure, which is real important. If you guys were just doing this in you know, a regular pot at home, get your chicken in there, add your, all your, your vegetable there. It cooks about an hour. And then check the temperature of the breast. Around 160 degrees, pull out the chicken. All right, And then continue cooking for about another hour. All right, the tortillas. We're making chicken tortilla soup. We need some tortillas. So there's two ways of doing this. I'm using corn. Often these are like flour and corn in the store. Try to get just the corn. It'll fry up or bake better. And get the cuts really even. That's real important. You don't want these looking disproportionate in size because it's essentially a garnish, you know. So I'm going to do the bake. If you guys want to do it on the stovetop, just a little bit of oil. Shallow fry them. They'll crisp up nicely. You don't want to have the temperature too hot so they don't brown on you and burn. I'm going to use some olive oil mixed with some canola oil here. And the idea here is not to go nuts on oil, but just to coat everything. It's going to give it a little bit of a chance, a heads up in the oven, for it to actually crisp up for us. So you can see that wasn't a ton of oil, maybe a tablespoon total. And just spread everything out. You don't want anything touching, otherwise they're going to stick once they start to cook. So into the oven. Check on it as it goes, 325 for about 10 minutes. And along the way, like I said, open up, check it out. This is a done product here. These are all super crispy and you can hear it whenever they're ready to go you can pull one out take a little bite so the base this is the amazing wonderful super secret flavor weapon bomb this is what makes this dish and we're going to do it fairly traditional so here's something to look at when you guys are dealing with onions the thing in the middle you want to make sure that it's not green it's just easy to remove boink and it ruins your dish and garlic you guys have seen that probably many a times never use that stuff it's bitter it's under ripened and it's gross, and it's going to ruin your dish. So I got two different types of peppers here. I've got wahio, and i got an ancho. The wahio, which is this one right here, has got a little more heat than you could say the, the, the ancho. But when you dry peppers, they get sweeter. So neither one of these are what you would consider hot or spicy. It's going to add a little bit of smokiness and really bring this dish to across the border, if you will, south of the border. It's, it's the magic ingredient. If you guys can't get this in your area, I'll put a link below where you guys can get it fairly inexpensive, which is, you know, one of the cool things about dry peppers, but they're just such an amazing ingredient. 
So we're cutting out the rib here, and that's important because that's a little bit bitter, and we don't want it. We're about to char these ingredients, and the char is another level of flavor. So you can see that's really clean, looking nice. And one orange bell pepper. Now, if you can't get that, no problem. You guys can use whatever pepper you guys want. I think it looks really nice. Plus, this isn't our base. It's a little bit sweeter than even a regular red bell pepper. And I think it works nice with the peppers and the sweetness. Everything comes together in a beautiful base. So we're going to use a cast iron. You could use whatever you got. And the idea is we're going to get some char. And the cast iron just gets really hot. And it makes charring a little easier. So you can go as far with this as you want. Traditionally, they char it more than I have here. I didn't want to, I don't want to overdo it. I think the char flavor comes through. And sometimes people want to go close to burnt. Don't put it in the blender. We're going to put in a cup of water. Those are the dried peppers. And we're going to make them soft. We're going to put in the microwave for a little bit. Three minutes, and they'll be super soft so that the blender can do its job. And don't throw away that liquid. They call it the liquor. Pour it in there. Like oyster liquor, the little leftover. I think they still say that when you're doing with vegetables like that. But it helps the blender get started, too. So it works out really nice. Plus, it's flavor. Look at this color. Voila. Just such an amazing thing. You guys could probably repurpose that for a ton of different dishes. But you'll see here, you'll see the little bit of the, the peppers running through, the dried peppers, and that smokiness and flavor is its magic, man. They got it right, whoever came up with that. Okay. So we're going to do a few more ingredients here. This is going to actually go back into the Instapot with the broth that we made and soften. This is cool, pepper growing inside of a pepper. I had to look it up because I'm not sure what they, exactly they called it. They called it an internal proliferation. Interesting. Little pepper inside of a big pepper. So we're going to get the rib out because it's bitter. We don't want bitterness in this dish. Some dishes require bitterness. This one's not. I like to press it down like that just to get everything nice and flat. It makes it safer for cutting. And who wants to cut them individually? You guys could. That's a cool little uh, time saver. So we're cutting it and making julienne, then we're going to cross hatch, cut them whatever size you want. This will be, you'll be able to see this in the actual soup itself. This is the leftover vegetable. We'll be adding other things to it that have more texture, but this is going to become a bit soft and part of the broth. We're building flavors here, guys, which is cool. So the poblano, you might've noticed I pointed at the stem there. Poblanos that have curved stems are hotter than ones that have straight stems. So that helps you when you're in the grocery store and you guys are shopping. So here's how you deal with the pressure. We're letting it out right there with the knife, and that little metal thing drops in. You know if the pressure is released enough, then it's safe to remove the lid. That's the big scare factor. No more. So this is our chicken. Let's see how well the Instapot cooks chicken. You guys ever tried that before? I'm going to tell you, it works amazing. Look at this chicken bone. It doesn't even want to stay in. It's that amazing of a product. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yes, I am an Instapot lover. So look how easy that just flakes apart. Taking the fork, not even having to hardly do anything. And look, it just falls apart. If anything, you could take this video and just make Instapot chicken. Look at that color, guys. I mean, everything is bright, fresh, and vibrant. This is what everyone in the food world seems to want nowadays. And the cool thing is we can do this at home with fairly inexpensive ingredients. It's just we're using good technique, which is fun. So we're going to add the base right into our broth. You could add some chipotle pepper. If you want a little more heat, I don't think it needs it, but it's an idea for some of you guys if you're looking a way to amp the flavor up. You could just add a little jalapeno in there right now too because this is going to get cooked again under pressure. So the cilantro, very traditional, and it also offers a pop of freshness. You know, some of these ingredients have been cooking in, inside of the Instapot for a while, so we're going to give it some pop of freshness. And here comes our friend lime. It looks like I only use half a lime here, but it's a whole lime. We've got a lot of liquid in there. We're going to get the lid back on, make sure it's secured. It makes a noise whenever the, the lid's secured. Not doing this, but make sure that's on sealing. Once the lid is secured, it makes a little noise. So we're going to put this back onto the soup, which is a pressure cooking setting, and we're going to go for 15 minutes. If not, put everything back into a pot. It takes twice as long. It takes 30 minutes. So let's plate it up. Bunch of ways you guys can plate it. I just thought you guys might like to see what I did here. So you can see all of our peppers have softened. So this is like the broth. You know, this is our base. 
but we add a little bit of texture to our broth, which is nice. So the amount of flavor we have right there, guys, I had an idea. You could take this alone, just that, and use that probably in like a, a chili. I mean, how great would that be? It'd be amazing. And I've got a Texas chili recipe below that a lot of people have liked. I'll go ahead and put a link below for you guys to check that out if you want. So a little bit of our delicious base. Just fill it, try to fill up proportionate to the bowl. Like some bowls, a little less, a little bit more. And then let's start with the chicken. This is chicken tortilla soup. So make sure that the chicken is noticeable. That's that's my tip to you guys. Because we eat with our eyes, you know. And this is a hearty soup. So people like seeing all that goodies inside of there. So we're getting a little height in the dish also by adding this, this cooked chicken here. So far as traditional goes, I'm not sure exactly what super traditional is for this dish. If you guys leave a comment below, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. It really would. So this is an artisan dish, not, not so much traditional. So this is a little bit Tex-Mexy, adding the corn. I'm from Texas, so we do Tex-Mex stuff. Make sure that you drain the beans in a, in a strainer. Um, rinse them under water, too. Otherwise, they're going to run, and you're going to get the black bean running everything. It's going to ruin the color. It's going to look gross. So just make sure you run it under water. Real important. So I'm slicing a little avocado. You know, color, texture. Who doesn't want to have avocado with a nice chicken tortilla soup? I would not miss out on that. So you could pretty much put that however you want. You could lay it flat in the middle. It would look really nice. So we have onion running all the way through this dish. So we're going to use a little green onion as some garnish. And it's also going to provide a little bit of texture. And it's not going to taste like all the other onion, which is cool when you're eating it. That's a, that's a more depth of flavor for you. And I'm doing a 45-degree cut on that, which they call a cut on the bias. It just makes it look good. They call it a chef -y cut. Any cheese you guys like? I'm pretty sure the traditional would be a cojilla cheese, Mexican Parmesan, which is really good, highly available. And a little pop of lime, just to finish it and round everything off. And we guys, we've got ourselves a dish that is restaurant quality worthy, by, by sure. Now, we didn't add any salt, so you guys got to keep an eye out for how much salt you want. I'm going to have a link below for an Instapot. You guys can use the same one that I'm using. Prices are as good as your fine line, I promise. Come join us on social media. We'd love to have you guys over there. Go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button if you guys enjoyed, which would be great. And link below, recipe card, all the instructions, everything for you guys. Over here, we've got a link back to other recipes on our site. I guess that's going to be for other main courses. And then over here on the right, a link back to our main website. And you guys have the best. Take care.